said to his disciples uh, in the book of Matthew chapter number 10 verse 14 when he sent his disciples out sent them out by twos to preach the gospel he said if anyone will not welcome you I listen shake the very dust off your feet my message to you today is shake the dust Many of you preachers out there the Lord says shake the dust what do you mean preacher Warren I know God sent you to preach the gospel and as many times God was sent you to warn people but it gets to a point when people don't want to hear when the folk don't want to hear the word don't want to repent you cannot force the Bible on nobody you cannot force the truth on nobody see our job preachers who are called and chosen by God is to preach the word and present the word but not force the word we're living in days where the Bible said men would not endure a sound doctrine they'll have itching ears but preach the word in season and out of season it gets to a point that you must shake the very dust they don't want to hear it the Lord I did my part go your way you got a lot of you mothers so you're trying to save your children you're not superwoman <laughs> We're not Superman. We're not greater than Jesus. Even it comes to a point where even Jesus shakes the dust off certain people. And nobody is more loving than Jesus Christ. Or he will call people. But he said, but the Bible said many are called, but few are chosen. The ones who are chosen are the ones, hear this, who are receptive. The ones who are chosen are the ones who will receive his word. Now there's times where the Lord do chastise people. And there's times when God just give them up over to a reprobated mind. Read the book of Romans chapter number one. Go to verse number 32. Ah, if you read that whole chapter, verse 25, verse 26, even start from verse 21, one of those verses that said he gave them over to a reprobated mind. They ain't want to live holy. They ain't want the truth. And that's why bad things happen to them. You got to shake the dust. Praise God. You'll find yourself feeling better. you find yourself having more peace. There's certain, preaching, there's certain areas I don't preach at unless I'm led by the Holy Ghost. Why? Because I know that the area don't want the gospel. I go to the areas where God sent me at where they're receptive to the word. Yes, there's times I preach in churches. I've been preaching the gospel since I was six years old. Praise God. And because me being a young minister and also a young musician, I grew up in the church, although it was an apostolic church, but I grew up in a church where uh, the older preachers could not accept the fact that me being a young minister was being used by God because I didn't have a title of an elder or a junior pastor. First of all, a junior pastor is not even in the Bible. Either you're a pastor or you're not. And because they saw that I was a young man being used by God at an early age and the people began to admire the ministry, a lot of the older preachers got jealous. A lot of the older pastors have gotten jealous. Oh my God. Sometimes you deal with jealousy even in your own family. Your own sister or your own brother. Play hating you because you have a gift. Oh, well, I'm a very competitive. So I begin, God was using me at an early age to prophesy on people. One time I told a man one time, I said, the Lord said expect a thousand dollars tomorrow. I gave him that prophecy on a Sunday. Never forget it. Do you not know that that man called me up? Actually, this was a preacher I prophesied to. I had to be about, at the time, about 17 or 18 years old, maybe even, maybe even a, a little younger than that. He came to me and said the next day, he got a $1,000 check in his mail the next day. After God had me prophesied that word to him that Sunday. And i never forget this. True story. I said, to God be all the glory. I don't want all the glory. Every time God does a miracle in the ministry, to God be all the glory. Then the Lord had me prophesying on people in church and things will come to pass. Word got back to the bishops. Lime got mad, had me in the office. That wasn't God. They said, that wasn't God. The Lord had me casting out devils up in the church at an early age. Next year I know some of the leaders of the church had a meeting on me with some of the ministers. They started spreading lies of me in the church saying I'm a warlock. That the reason why I'm, that I cast out devils because I work with devils. I said, wait a minute. How can Satan cast out Satan? That's the same thing they said about Jesus when uh, he was casting out devils. They said he cast out devils through Beelzebub. Now, I'm not trying to make myself equal to Jesus. But I'm working for Jesus. But my point I'm trying to say, because I was being used at an early age, 
I thought that the older men of God would be happy. Instead, a lot of them got jealous. Some was happy. When the people was getting blessed, they said, oh, you too young to preach like that. You just a boy. I had the pastor had me in the office for years, would call me to the office. I never forget it. And I never forget when the bishop would put me down in the office. He would always say to me, you're going to fall. You're going to fall. I say, wow, this man of God is telling me I'm going to fall. He's supposed to tell me I'm going to make it. And this was a man of God. But the man was still human. Even men of God makes mistakes because of envy. He saw how God was using me at an early age. That's why Paul said, let no man despise thy youth. He said it's somewhere in Timothy. Sometimes when they see a young man or a young woman being used by God, I didn't go to Bible school. I didn't go to Bible college. Nothing wrong with Bible college, but the Lord had me studying the Bible in the library. God was giving me sermons through my suffering I was going through, preaching up in the streets and up in the hood and up in the projects. And God would have me do street meetings in Harlem, 14, 15 years old. And people was getting saved and delivered in the street. Meanwhile, the preachers got mad and had meetings on me in the church. <laughs> My God, I would have youth services and people would testify how miracles was happening in the ministry. So a lot of the leaders got mad. So that's not God. And the bishop would have me back in the office again. You're going to fall. I'm not making this up. I couldn't believe this was coming out this man of God's mouth who I look up to. And I said to him, I'm not going to fall. I'm going to make it. God is able to keep me from falling. Who God has begun a good work in me. He will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I was shocked. I had to tell this man of God this. Then I had to deal with a play hating family. I had folk in my family who supposedly went to church throwing my Bible on the floor. My own family. I had a family member one time got so jealous, she started doing witchcraft against me. Right in the house, I said, the blood of Jesus, no weapon that formed against me shall prosper. I had a play-hating family, and they go to church, throwing Bibles on the floor. And then when you're being raised, and my father died when I was three years old, and when you're being raised, and I, and I thank God for my mother, but when you're being raised by somebody who is bitter, and then she takes her bitterness out on her own son, no matter how many times I was being used by God, it was criticism, negative. <laughs> Criticism. You can't count. You're too slow. I'm going to teach you about how to overcome low self-esteem because many of you got low self-esteem because you was always being put down a lot. You was always being criticized a lot. You didn't get enough encouragement growing up. I had to learn how to encourage myself. And I thank God for my mother. I still love her. I forgive her. Oh, man, when well, you getting beat, 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 oh, my God. And then when you're favoring other family members who's doing all this wrong, but they're not being rebuked. See, what I'm trying to say is that being a young man of God was not easy growing up because you get per most of my persecution came from the church. Street too, but mostly from the church. Mostly from elders and bishops, uh, missionaries that had my name on trees, doing witchcraft against Minister Warren, little Minister Warren, but it didn't work. A lot of them had died for working evil against me. And because God was using me at an early age, I had apostles, so-called apostles. One time, one had a meeting on me, made this lie up about me in church, saying I was having sex with girls, and I wasn't doing that. I was a virgin at the time before I got married to my wife, Priscilla. They'll forget this. He got mad because the Lord was using me to minister in the youth services. So most of the time, most preachers had meetings on me, spreading lies, trying to break up my relationships. One of my exes was having sex with a pastor of a church. And he was married, had to call the whole wedding off. My other best friend, so-called best friend, uh, he's somewhere in the South Carolina, was having sex with a young lady that I was dating in his limousine. He was already engaged to be married. I had to call that relationship off. I've been cheated on at least more than seven times. Bishops, preachers. Most of my enemies and my attacks came from people in the church. Family members. I had women family members throwing my Bible on the floor. Tell me I'm not a man of God. I was about 13 years old at the, at the time. Did it with all this jealousy and play haters. And see, I had to learn that you cannot try to make friends with somebody who don't want to be friends with you. That's why Jesus said, shake the very dust off your feet. Leave them alone and live your life for Jesus. Many of you mothers are there trying to help people who don't want help. You're up there raising your children's children, your grandchildren. 
and your children are rebellious against you. I hear the Lord say, shake the dust. No wonder you've been depressed. No wonder your head's falling out. I never forget in church years ago, I used to preach up in the prayer room. They asked me to preach up in the prayer room. I never forget some of the members from Times Square Church would come hear me preach. There were some cops coming from the street hearing me preach and getting saved. And then there was an accusation from the leaders. They said, oh, Minister Warren, you joined too many sinners. They're not in the organization. We don't want them here. We don't want you preaching up here in the prayer room no more. So I never forget one of the leaders of the church came to me and said, we don't want some ministry here no more. Because you joined too many. Uh, there was an accusation I was joining too many sinners. Well, that's, that's why we preach is to join sinners. Jesus said, they that are whole don't need a physician, but they that are sick. He said, I didn't come to call the righteous. I come to call the sinners to repentance. I never forget it. My leader told me years ago. So I don't want you preaching in the street. Just stay in the organization. But I said, man of God, I respect you. But it was God the one. It was God who called me. He told me to go in the street and preach up in Harlem, preach up in the Bronx, go in the hood, go in the projects and compel them to come to Jesus. And the souls was getting baptized. I remember when I was about 12 years old, I used to go to the abandoned buildings and feed the homeless people. I would take my mother's food that she cooked for me and take that food and feed the homeless people and the abandoned buildings and preach to them and bring them to the church and they got baptized and got saved. Yet I was getting criticized for that. I was getting criticized for doing good. I was getting fought for doing good. Because we live in days that people call right wrong and wrong right. We live in days where Jesus said that men love darkness rather than light. So I was shocked when church people was coming against me because I was doing right. I said, everybody in church is not saved. They only have a form of godliness, but denying the power. You got the wheat and you got the tares. Uh, Jesus said the wheat and the tares grow together. I want to share this testimony with somebody because it's going to help somebody. So I had to shake the dust off certain people. I had to shake the dust off of certain family members. I had to shake the dust off of certain churches because my ministry was not received. They saw miracles happening. They were talking about that's not God. Foot was getting out of wheelchairs. I never forget, I was asked to preach out of church one time in Brooklyn up in New York City where I came from. I was born in Harlem. Now, I never forget, I preached up in the service and there was a woman in a wheelchair who never was able to walk. She was paralyzed. And while I was preaching the word, got it on video, never forget this. She jumped out the wheelchair and God healed her. The pastor got mad. They had a meeting on me, so here we go again. Having the same jealous problem in another church. Claiming that wasn't God. Or that wasn't God. It certainly enough was not the devil, but they was trying to make it look like that the anointing of my life was not of God. They was accusing me of doing witchcraft and never did no witchcraft. Satan cannot cast out Satan. So I left that church and so said they're not receiving my ministry. So I'm trying to get to a point. The reason why I'm so happy, because I shook the dust. I don't try to force ministry on people who don't want it. There are a lot of folk who don't want help. Like my mother, I love my mother so much. But she told me and my siblings that she didn't want us to give her birthday cards. She didn't want us to give her any money. I never forget one time when my mother needed something, some money. Found out about it, I wanted to surprise my mother. Call my other brothers and sisters up on the phone. I said, let's, let's surprise mom with money. Let's help her. Called the family up. We got our money together. And I told my mother that we have a surprise for you. I told her about it. My mother got mad. I couldn't understand why she was getting mad. She started crying. How can you do this to me? I don't want you telling nobody about what I'm going through. I mean, she went off. Called the family members up, told them I was wrong. She acted like I was a convict. And I felt bad because she did not receive the love that I wanted to show her. I had a, my mother's a little different than most mothers. Most mothers were like they're children to help them. Mine's a little opposite. I told my mother one time years ago, I said, Ma, one day I want to buy you a house when God blessed me. She said, I don't want it. She didn't want to receive the help. She didn't want to receive the love. Everything is negative, negative, confusion. So now, I was wondering why the Lord would let me go through that. And I said, well, I'm dealing with a mentality with a woman who does not want to receive love. You throw it back in your face. So I'm trying to get to a point. And not only did she want to receive love, but then getting mad at me because I want to show love. Never forget there was a man one time 
around the block years ago. I'm married now, though. Years ago. I, I didn't know I was going to go this way, but, but it's going to help somebody. It's years ago. A gangster one time hit my mother in the face. I went and found the gangster, beat him down the street. God said, that's still my mother. I said, Lord, I'm wrong, but I got to protect my mother. Beat him down, the cops arrested him. Because this man was terrorizing the whole block. My mother went and bailed the man out of jail. Said I was wrong. And it was embarrassing because the people, the neighbors was like, wait a minute, that's your son. He's trying to protect you. <laughs> she stuck up for the gangster who beat her. I could understand that. And act like I was a convict. Didn't want to receive the love. Didn't want to receive my protection. Everything's negative. Negative. Now, thank God for my mother. She raised me. But I'm talking about when you're dealing with a negative mentality, when somebody want to find fault with you and not want to find the good and not want to motivate and encourage you, you got to learn how to encourage yourself. You got to learn how to motivate yourself. You got to learn how to preach to yourself and say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I ask you have a low self-esteem in yourself. Every parent does not always motivate their children. You got those parents who like the bad boys. Oh, come on, somebody. You know those girls who like the bad boys? They'll give more respect to a bad man more than she would a good man. So when you're dealing with a parent with that kind of mentality, then now you got to change. See, that's a double-minded man. A double-minded woman. Look what the Bible said. James chapter 1 verse 8. A double-minded man, which includes woman, is unstable in all his ways, wavering in his, wavering in mind. They wavering. They're unstable. It's like dealing with a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. One day they're nice, the next day they're evil to you. One day they speak, next day they're going, they're sucking their teeth at you. You don't know what personality is going to show up next. Come on, I know I'm preaching the truth. Can I preach the truth here today? When well, you're dealing with those kind of mentality and skip those friends experience, and even though they go to church and they say, but everybody got issues. And I love my mother. I, I, I praise God for her. If I want to share some of my experiences. I had to shake the very dust. You don't want it, I can't force you to receive the love that I want to give to you. You don't want it, I can't force it. When you got folk in your family that want to keep being jealous and play hating you and competing with you and they don't want peace, all they want is confusion, shake the dust. Love them, but say, listen, I got to go on with Jesus. I have to live my life. If they try to break up your marriage and don't want to see you happy in your marriage, shake the dust. Other words, other words, cut them off. Separate yourself. That's why the Bible said, come out from among them and be ye separated and touch not the unclean thing. And I will be your God and you shall be my people. You got to shake the dust. Darkness and light has no fellowship. The Bible said, what fellowship do darkness have with light? Whoa, Lordy. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 said, can two walk together except they be agreed. You can't put a wolf with a sheep. Uh, the wolf will try to devour the sheep. Many of you are trying to change that man who don't want to change. He keep beating you up and cheating on you. She keep cheating on you and you trying to make it work. Only time it can work, it takes two to make it work. Not one. Shake the dust. They're draining you out. No wonder you've been depressed. But God want to give you rest. Tell yourself, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Whoa, too anointed to be disappointed. Shake the dust. Many of you are so in love with that man that you love that man more than you love God. Many of you are loving that woman more than you love God. You're not supposed to make nobody an idol. Because the Bible says idolaters will not inherit the kingdom of God. You have to love yourself enough to say, I'm not going to stay in no abusive relationship. I'm not going to keep being cheated on and cheated on. Before you look for a man or a woman to love you, learn how to love yourself. When you first learn how to love Jesus first, he'll teach you how to love you. Oh, hallelujah. Don't kill yourself over no man. Don't kill yourself over no woman. You're supposed to love God more than you love anything in this world. You're supposed to love God more than you love your family. So if your family don't want to get saved, you keep on going with Jesus. Whoa, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shake the very dust. And that's what Jesus told his disciples. And I feel better. I got more joy. See, so God wants you to have peace. He don't want you to have a nervous breakdown. Many of you are having a nervous breakdown, but it's time to have a breakthrough. Whoa, hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. 
I, I'm not talking about smoking weed. God is all we need. Don't need no angel dust. And God, we ought to trust. You don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. Don't let nobody have you. Let you have, make you have a nervous breakdown. Because you're trying to change someone who doesn't want to change. You're trying to change your child who keep going to jail and in and out of jail and don't want to repent. And you bail them out of jail. Now they back out of jail. And now they still beating you up. Leave them in jail. That's your child, but you don't dig your part. Shake the dust so you can keep your joy. Keep your peace. Ah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't preach everywhere unless I'm led by the Spirit. And that's why I got so much peace. Do you not know that when you keep trying to help somebody who don't want help and they have a rebellious spirit, do you know bad things that happen to you? All of a sudden, your finances are getting blocked. Your money is getting blocked. All this blockage is in your life. You got hindrances in your life because you keep... You keep trying to help somebody who don't want to be saved, who don't want to repent. If they don't want to repent, just shake the dust. You keep on living for Jesus. You separate yourself. Say, I love them, but I love God more. Then you find yourself feeling better. There won't be as many hindrances in your life. You won't feel as stressed out. You can't change folk who don't want to change. As loving as Jesus is, he didn't reject certain folk. What did the Bible say? God said, my spirit will not strive with man always. God gave the world time to repent. Back in the days of Noah, they rejected God. God sent the flood. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Nobody is more loving than Jesus. Nobody is more loving than God. Jesus is God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. St. John chapter 1 verse 10 said it And the world was made by him who made the world God Verse 14 said And the word was made flesh and dwell among us As loving as Jesus is Look what Jesus said to his disciples If they do, if they do not receive you Matthew chapter 10 verse 14 If anyone will not welcome you Shake the very dust If they don't want the word Shake the dust Many of you keep trying to preach to folk Who don't want it That's why bad things happen to them because the wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. But the gift of God is eternal life. Do Jesus Christ our Lord. They don't want it. Leave it alone. Deal with people who are receptive. Deal with people who are humble. Jesus said in the meek shall I inherit the earth. What do it mean to be meek? It means to be humble. If my people which I call by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. You got to be humble before you pray. Not just pray, but pray and obey. Humble yourself. God resists the proud and give us grace unto the humble. One of the six things that God hates is a pride, is a proud look. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16. God hates pride. You got to humble yourself to God if you want God to answer your prayers. Don't just stop right there. Humble yourself and pray. They go on to say, seek my face. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you, woman of God. I'm happy to see you. God, have a good day today. Praise the Lord. Don't seek after the witch doctors. Don't seek after Harry Potter. All that magic is of the devil. All that is witchcraft. God speaks against witchcraft in the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 18. But seek God's face. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God ha, and all his righteousness. Ha, that all these things shall be added unto you. I knew I was going to go this long, but this is the Holy Ghost. Then turn from your wicked ways. Stop the racism. Stop the jealousy. Stop the killing. Stop the adultery. Stop all this evil. Oh, hallelujah. Turn from your wicked ways, which means to repent. And be baptized every one of you huh? in the name of Jesus Christ huh? for the remissions of sins. And he shall huh? receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then I will come and hear from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will heal the land. Now God can heal. But shake the very dust. Cut off people who don't want to repent. Who keep breaking your heart. Yes, forgive them because we got to forgive. But forgiving does not mean to connect. Oh, that's deep. Forgive, but don't connect. If they don't want to repent, don't let them drain you out. That's why Jesus said, shake the dust. Loving does not mean to let your wife or your husband keep abusing you. Love them, but don't love what they do. It's a difference. They don't want to repent. Shake them off. Uh, now you find yourself having more peace. You got a peace of mind. Now your blessings are flowing better. Your finances that was being blocked is flowing better. 
You not keep giving the people who want help, but they're never there to help you. Oh, can I have this? Can I have that? But they don't want to work. They're not trying to elevate themselves in life. And you keep draining yourself trying to help somebody who's not even trying to better themselves. The Bible said, faith without works is dead. You don't just ask God for a blessing. You got to work for that. When you have faith, you got to put some works behind that. Because the Bible said faith without works is dead. Shake the very dust.